If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. You know what we did is we have uh, ECC and SLT, you know, on on the both both on the same um, server, basically. And, oh, okay. Uh, Actually, like, uh, do they have? Uh, can you go to SAP GUI and uh, do they have separate systems as SLT? Yeah, so SAP GUI, what, what, what information you are looking for? Like the, I mean, like if you go to the GUI, like a SLT was listed as a separate system. Uh, no, actually, you know, so this Hello. is an a... Sam, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. This is Chris here. How are you? I'm doing good, Chris. Sounds How good, are sounds you? Good. All well, all well. Thanks for asking, Sam. So everything is up to date, right? The system access and everything. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, for me, system access and everything is up, up to date. You know, everything looks good. But uh, still, I believe, you know, Chandra don't have access to the system, you know, specifically okay. SLT system. Actually, uh, Chris, uh, this uh, is by Chandra. today, I'll make sure your Chandra access. Uh, I mean, like Chandra, by today, I'll make sure your server access has been released to you with the complete things. Okay. Okay, so am I going to have the same system like that Sam has? Uh, because yes, you will have the same. Okay, because uh, the other day, two days ago, the one that I received, I think cloud system, something like that. Right, right, that right. I, I do understand, and I have also gone through the issues and everything. I apologize for that. So today, by end of the day, you would be getting the server as Sam has. So you don't worry about it. So I'm going to get a different email with the system. Yes, you would be getting a different okay. email with the complete credentials released to you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Thank Thanks. you, Chandra. You can take yeah, it forward. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. So, so uh, Chandra, what we have is, you know, here, and um, fortunately, you know, you, you will get the access as well, you know, on this one. So, AET, you know, this is the set for your ECC and SLT both. And uh, what we did is basically the ECC system is there. And then on top of that, they have installed the DM DMIS component. You know, and the DMS component is running on top of it as well. You know, then we have BW4 HANA, you know, that's a separate system. And then we have a HANA system as well, you know, which I will I will just introduce you in a next couple of minutes. You know, so before we go there, you know, we you know let's let's cover the basics as well. You know, last time when when we were discussing about it. So, you know, you know, this this is basically runs on DMIS component. You know, so DMS component is basically installed, and once it is installed, basically on any of this uh, this system, you know, you know, basically these two, D DMS and DMS CNT, which is a, a, a content, you know, same as BI count. You know, there is a DMS count as well. You know, but for running an SLT, you just need DMS. You know, be we, uh, we need the count basically at for the TDMS. You know, for for uh, this uh, SLT purpose, we don't need uh, DMS uh, content basically. So going from here, you know, so there is two ways to get to your SLT. One is your- so, uh, I think uh, I'll a quick, quick question on the installing both of them on the same machine. Actually, I think from landscape perspective, for development somewhere or like for development systems like a development QA it is fine but for production at least like a, it needs to be separated to avoid any downtime like when during that is that is correct you know now um you know it's never recommended to install it on any of the transactional based system you know like mm -hmm. ecc mdg s4 you know um and the reason is basically most of the time those systems are on a critical path you know, and uh, you will see the during doing the tuning as you know putting a load on the transactional based system for such a you know high activity, which is a data loads. You know, it's not recommended at all. And uh, as you mentioned, basically in sandbox environment development, it will work. But I will recommend you know in QA system onwards, you know th th this should be a different system altogether. Okay, and uh, are we going to see any different? Uh behavior like our functionality as far as that we can experience like a, when it is installed in the same system versus different systems for our practical scenario purposes mm -hmm. no no the from a functionality perspective and what you're going to see in the system that's going to be exactly the same thing you know because it's uh, all captured within the transition codes 
you know so the transaction code you run that in in a, in the this kind of environment what i'm showing you or you run in the standalone slt system you know it, it your experience will be same your screens will be same everything will be same uh, but you know definitely from a performance perspective you will see when we are working on it you know the system is uh, the degraded basically from a performance now th this is this is for the training purposes sandbox you know kind of a scenario but uh, that will work over here but you know uh, as we as we discussed from a qa onwards this is not recommended you know from that perspective okay perfect yeah now you know to get to slt there are two ways to do that you know the first one is your ltrc you know which is the t code what we discussed last time and uh, this is the t code you know now i have created this one of the uh, mass id transfer id basically which is going from our ecc and i will show you all the config and everything on this one you know just to make sure and you know and uh, then uh, once you get the system access you know feel free to uh, create, create another mass id you know similar to this one but we will not delete this one you know we will keep using this one basically for the rest of our uh, the training uh, training topics you know what we need to cover so right. multiple uh, multiple mass transfer IDs can be created for the same uh, source and target systems. Yes, yes, you can create that. But uh, the technical name, the configuration name, you know, you see the configuration name over here is ECC HANA yeah. SLT. So that needs to be different. Um, but but you can create that, um, you know, with the same RFC, same DB connection. You know, and uh, how the DB connection will work. You know that that I will show you. And uh, you know, once you go through the practical as well, you know, uh, we will we will go through that. If you see any challenges, you know, we will we will uh, work through basically how to resolve those and things like that. Right. Okay. And do we ever create multiple uh, MTIDs like uh, for the same source and uh, target like in production environment in real life scenario? Is there any need or no? Yes there is there is a need you know so in in that kind of a scenario you know so uh, let me open a you know ms paint really quick over here you know so i will be using that as a whiteboarding you know now nowadays basically that's the only whiteboard what we have <laughs> okay. so, uh, just give me a moment i'm opening on my machine does Zoom provide anything like, I mean, easy tools so far? Uh, Zoom doesn't provide, you know, there is a Google tool which provides that basically that's a, that's called Collaborate, you know, but uh, it's, it's uh, with, with Zoom, there is nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is the scenario basically, you know, so you have a source over here, then you have a two different targets, let's say, right? And in this kind of a scenario, basically you will be very much, you will be doing that, right? The, you will have uh, a same source, which is your ECC, you know, going to your HANA uh, sidecar scenario, let's say, you know, the, the first one we are assuming as sidecar scenario over here. And uh, this is your HANA. And, uh, you know, let's assume this is your ECC basically. And then you want to replicate this thing to um, S4. You know, there is another system. So in this kind of a scenario, definitely we will be creating a same um, ID, you know, same uh, source system with the two different mass IDs. So if I go to a, uh, my a LTRC, you know, you will see mass ID basically going from ECC to HANA, ECC and the second mass ID that will be going from ECC to S4. You know, in this scenario, we will we will see that and uh, this is very much possible scenario in the production environment as well where you need to replicate the data from a same source system to multiple now my question is like a same source and same target do we i mean just now like we were discussing okay like, let me create another one you asked me to create another one when i get system access right so is, right. is that only for like a learning purpose actually like in real life also like is there any need to because I think whenever we create this uh, configuration, it is going to create a schema on the honor side, right? So that's that's correct. You know, so that that scenario, I will I will describe basically. You know how to do that. But the answer to your question is in the real time scenario. You know, it's uh, there is no need and there is no um, scenario basically that will ask you to do a two mass IDs on the same source and the target. You know, okay. but there could be uh, one use case which uh, uh, 
uh, which we will be discussing, you know, and how we're gonna do the configuration as well in our system. So let's assume, you know, these. This is one one box basically over here. Basically, this is your HANA HANA system, and let's assume these are the two different schema H and S4. You know, for example, and mm -hmm. uh, we we will remove this guy from here. Basically, sorry. Okay, so we will remove this guy from here. Now we have our ECC uh, RFC created basically, um, you know, through SLT, and that will remain same in both cases, you know, over here in ECC. Now on HANA side, this is your sidecar, you know, and uh, in sidecar, you can do basically with the two different schemas. As soon as you add, add it, basically, this is schema H, this is your schema S4. You know, so this is basically divided logically, but you know you can create that with a different name name uh, configuration. So and with the two different schemas, but to the same schema, you know you cannot do that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we need to definitely. I think probably we need two separate. Uh, MTIDs in order to have two different schemas. Correct. Right. Uh, and also, I think there is some schema mapping, suppose, e, all available on the ANA side, I believe. It's not e It's not the schema mapping, actually. You know, so as what how it works is basically if you have your user, you know, let's say, and let me get back to the system over here, you know, so let me get into this MTID. You know, and I would like to show you how the configuration is done for this guy, and uh, th that will make things more clear for you. So, if we go to the administration uh, data, so in this this administration data, you see that we are using basically this RFC, you know, for the source system, which is the which is T ninety CLNT, which is this uh, this is its own system, you know, AAT. This is the same system basically. Now, when we are talking about, uh, you know, target system, you know, in target system, what we are doing is, you know, it's a sidecar. So it is showing you 23.RR. You know, what that means is um, you can see basically any database connection going to DBCO. This is the transaction code basically. And uh, you will maintain you know, your 23RR, which is your ECC Ehana SLT, you know, that is basically already maintained over here. If I double click on it, it will show me, you know, this is going to this um, this um, HANA database and this is the schema name because your user username will end up as your, you know, uh, schema as well. So if you go, Go and create another to DBCO first. What I would I will do is you know I will create my HANA. Uh, Your voice is breaking up. Is it good now? Yeah, okay. So I mean, in between it's breaking up. Okay. Uh, let yeah, me now, now. Now it is okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Let me plug in the hardwire. You know, so that way. We, we can make sure it is not between again, you know, so, okay. So, you know, from this perspective, if you see, you know, what I did is I created a user in this guy. By the name of ECC HANA SLT. As soon as this user is created and uh, you you create this user and then after that, basically you will go to your ECC or SLT system. You know, in this case, it's uh, your SLT system and uh, you will go to transaction code DBCO, right? And in DBCO, you will maintain another connection entry. You know, so what, what we're gonna do is basically, oh, and, you know, so DBCO. So I'm in a different system. I think I'm in a BW. I will just log it off from here.
So I will go to DBCO, you know, and I created a new entry over here. Basically, change it, you know, and create a new entry. As soon as I create a new entry over here, basically, it, it's going to ask me uh, details for the DB connection. You know, so my DB connection name could be anything, basically, in this case. And then I give my uh, DBMS name, which is your HANA DB. You know, so if you click on this um, magnif mag magnifying uh, glass, basically, you know, it will show you uh, HDB. You know, so HANA DB, you will select this one. Then the user, you will provide the username, you will provide the uh, uh, password, then you will provide the connection details, which is your IP address or the host name of your HANA, uh, HANA instance. And the port number will be, uh, all. port number is always 30015. And, uh, you know, you want to create the, as a permanent connection. You know, what that means is basically any time, you know, this system going to talk to uh, HANA, you know, it will use this connection. So that's why we don't maintain this. That's the reason, you know, how you can maintain basically your multiple connections as well. Then you want to put the connection limit, you know. So what that means is how many threads you can create with this connection on the DB side. You know, one, two, three, four, five, ten. You know, as we want. So we leave it blank usually. You know, we don't provide any anything over here. You know, optimum connections. Uh, basically, we leave that blank as well. You know, there is we don't want to guess do a guesswork. You know, over here. You know, usually the SLT systems is standalone system, so we don't we don't have to do that basically. But if if that is required in very rare scenarios, you know, uh, that is something you know possible to do. But just to keep in mind, you know, these options are there, but we, you will hardly use uh, any of these. Now, once you maintain this DBCO connection, you know, you will come back to your SLT. And you will go to your LTRC, basically. Now, in in this in this connection, if you see, you know, this was maintained as your source system, then your uh, the target system from the DBCO connection, you know, and you 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 will come over here and you will activate this basically. Right now, it is already active. You know, if you click on deactivate, you know, it, the connection will get deactivated. But you know, at the same time, you can do an activation. You know, that's a manual step as well. You know, basically, when when we create the connection. Right. So th that's how you create your connection. It's fairly simple, you know, and uh, let me show you as well, you know, when when your DBCO connection is created, how you will do the mass ID as well. So you will click over here, you know, create the configuration. What it's going to ask you is give me the configuration name. You know, this configuration name should should differ from, you know, what is already maintained. Let's say ECC2, for example. And uh, you can put any description, you know, demo. Then if you want to maintain any authorization group for this, you know, you can maintain that. But usually, you know, in the, for the um, very rare companies, you know, maintain the authorization group because SLT is, is uh, you know, really weird at um, logging the error message. So, you know, most of the time, you know, when you are creating a new system, you know, so usually it is not there. But most of the time, you know, when you are mature, you know, you know what, what it is and you want to restrict the security authorization further, you know, at that time you create a security group for the SLT users that uh, that you're going to use in this connection type. So let's assume we are leaving it blank, you know, and uh, if I go to next, it is asking me the source, you know, specify your source system, which I have already given my RFC is T90, whatever, you know, so... Um, T90 CLNT 100 in this case. Now, allow a multiple usage, you know, so it is a really, you know, interesting piece over here. To, to your question, what you were asking is, if you want to give a multiple usage for the source, you know, you, you can check mark this option. And you have to, you know, when you are creating a same source with the multiple mass IDs, you know, then you, you have to basically over here. And then if you're reading from a single client, you have to mention, you know, yes, read from only single client where you are creating. And uh, that will be 800 in this case, because we are logged in into 800 client, right? Now, if we go to the next step, uh, 
Hold on. Let me see one thing really quick. There you go, zero nine zero. Okay, so I think we need to create a new, uh, you know, uh, RFC as well. But anyways, you know, so let me use a different uh, for this this demo purpose. And after that, we will uh, create your connection as well. You know, um, when when you get the access. Um, let's see. Okay. I think our BW system is uh, B4 edge. Don't see B4 edge as a connection type. Yeah, so once we get to the next step, uh, or maybe I can show you in the, this step as well, you know how the DB connection is. The next step is basically usually, okay, so never mind. You know, the, in the source system, you will provide the RFC system, or, you know, if it is a DB connection, you know, you will you will give the DB type. You know, if it is Oracle, SQL, HANA, you know, and, uh, DB2, uh, DB6, basically, you know, anything from Sybase as well, you know, all that. Now, in the when you go to the next step on the target side as well you know uh, it will show you uh, you want to do the hana db connection which is your sidecar scenario exactly you know so you will select a hana hana over there as soon as you do a hana you know it will ask you the what is the db connection now db connection is your host host uh, name for your database and your um, port number 30015 now the schema name, it's important. Remember the, as a first step, we created that user. Now that user name will come over here exactly as your schema name. As soon as you give that, you know, the schema will be populated, you know, similar to this guy. Now in catalog, you know, this, this uh, schema is there. And you see these tables, basically what I'm replicating, you know, these tables are already there now. So anyways, you know, we will come to this, this part for, uh, further on, but, you know, to keep in mind, you know, from here on, uh, this schema is created as soon as that user is created, basically. So, you know, I will go back to the screen. See, you know, the system is a little bit slow, but, uh, is again, you know, that's that's a training system, anyways. Now, over here, we already talked about the job options. These job options are number of data transfer jobs, you know. So we discuss about the what the data transfer jobs are used for, you know. So this these are mostly basically for your initial loads, you know and um, for the replication basically initial load is the next one basically this is your uh, replication 
and then there is a calculation job which which defines your um, synopsis you know and makes the trigger logging table all that basically that that will be done by the calculation job it calculates basically what kind of a schema it is uh, or what kind of a stable structure it is what kind of a synopsis access plan everything you know this this job do that so as we discussed basically in our previous uh, uh, one now the first, one thing the what first we, one is uh, the data transfer jobs is the replication that's correct so that's your replication jobs, you know, which is eight in number and the, your initial load jobs. Let's say, you know, you have uh, three jobs over here, you know, let's say eight jobs in your data replication. You can you have uh, nine tables in replication. So you will have all those tables basically active at or any given point in time. Only eight, eight jobs will be running in background. Your, your ninth table will be on hold unless and until you increase this number over here and assign more work processes, background work processes, you know, to your table replication, data replication, basically. So like in generally like an initial load will be more compared to replication, right? So in this case, why do we have more for transfer jobs, more transfer mm -hmm. jobs than the initial load? Not, not really, you know, so initial load happens only uh, at once. And uh, if you are adding, let's say, you know, uh, five tables or the three tables at a time, right? And uh, you every day, first of all, you know, once you once your system is up and running and everything is configured, you know, every day you are not adding adding uh, the tables basically, you know. And and if you do every day as well, you know, there will not be any, uh, you know, more than handful of tables basically for the initial load. As soon as you add the table, initial load jobs are only accountable for the initial load not for the data replication and we will see that on the next screen you know when we will add, uh, add the table you know i will i will show you but uh, initial uh, initial load happens only once in a life cycle of the table but the data transfer is is the replication which is happening continuously you know so as soon as your data is committed to your source you know it is happening continuously and that's the reason basically you need more and let's say you have uh, 10 tables, you know, which are in, in replication and uh, all of those 10 tables every now and then there is a transaction getting committed on ECC side and you want to replicate that to your sidecar. Basically, you know, those replication jobs will be will be doing its own magic in the background, basically putting all the uh, all the transactions basically from from the ECC to your sidecar. So that's a reason you need more data transfer jobs rather than initial jobs because initial job will uh, initial load will happen only once and it it will get away right so and and we, we we will see that you know and once i put the table i will i will show you the life cycle of the table you know how the status changes and and things like that and uh, same goes for your uh, calculation job as well you know as soon as you add your table you know it what it does is it starts with the initial initial load uh, before even before that it does its synopsis and uh, synopsis access plan basically you know calculating the uh, what type of uh, you know uh, structure it is for the table on the source side all that uh, collecting that information and bringing back to slt that's that's part of the calculation jo job which happens even before initial load so and uh, as as we add basically you know we will we will see that as well in the next screen any any questions before I move forward? Yeah, I think I, um, yeah, we're good. Okay, so the one thing what we have not so where do we see how many how many dialog processors are available on the server here? Is this no, just for the, the dialog processor processor the, just for SLT or because we install both of them on the same server or is this for yeah. ECC? Yeah, it doesn't work. Basically, you know, dialect processes uh, is it's uh, anything what we are seeing over here. It's not about the dialect processes. It's about the background processes because these are background jobs, right? Okay. So, okay. so background jobs and how to see the background work processes, I will show you, you know, but uh, how it works is basically it's if the SLT is also installed on your ECC, it doesn't matter to the total number of background processes available you know and there could be a possibility that you have your finance jobs running in the ecc system and then you have slt slt jobs running in on the same system 
but that is a total number of your background uh, processes you know it has nothing to do with slt or or uh, r2r or p2p whatever you are running basically on your ecc system uh, it doesn't work that that way but you know how to see that if you go to sm66 so these these are your uh, work processes basically you know and how to see basically what which which one is you know on a dialect you know you see dia you know we see btc which is your background you know if anywhere you see btc these are the background basically anywhere you see you know upd which is your update you know this is your school and uh, this is update as well now if you go to sm51 yeah if you click on this basically server there is only one server over here Sorry. We're going to see the running process which are active. Right. So you will you will see, you know, there is a monitoring schema and we will uh, this is also belongs to SLT. You know, anything starting with I U U C, you know, is is belongs to I uh, SLT basically. But over here, anyways, you know, I will come to that part, you know, on a little later thing. But um, to answer to your question, if you come to the SM50, you know, you will see basically there are three. And there are to, uh, total, there are three and two free out of that in, in the background. And same goes for your dialogue, you know, update, update to configuration, you know, so school, everything is visible over here. So um, this is per application server. And in this scenario, you are seeing only one application server, you know, so if you go to SM51, the, the previous screen, you know, there is only one application server. We have seen that. If you come to SM50, it will show you uh, the background process. If you go to SM66, you know, it will show you the total number of work processes that are running in system. Okay. So going back to LTRC. Now, one thing what we have not discussed in our previous session, you know, that was basically how to handle your execution, executing server, you know, and this is in, in particular to your, uh, the question, what you were asking, basically how to see the background jobs, how to see basically how many processes are there. Now, depending upon basically, let's say you have in SM51, we have seen only one application server in our system, but let's assume there are three, you know, just, just for the example purposes and, uh, you want to execute as a source system on on a, one of the application server and then you want to do a replication server on the second application server so you can basically do that uh, from here if you click on change job parameters you know so you can mention those basically server names you can mention the job class usually it is you know are you aware of uh, job classes a b c yeah yeah okay so, you know, you mentioned your uh, load balancing uh, for to load uh, balance the not, application servers. Job, job class is not for load balancing. It is for the priori prioritization of your uh, job. Let's say you have three jobs which are in the queue and there is one priority A, one is uh, and out of out of those three, what, there is a job um, has a priority A and then other two jobs has a priority uh, C. So the priority A will take first and that will get executed, you know, and uh, priority C will take the second priority basically in that case. But so indirectly, you like actually we are distributing the load on application servers uh, based on what is what is currently running kind of thing, right? Uh, ba based of that, but you know, when we define the job definition in SM 36 yeah, yeah, yeah. or 37, you know, it asks for a, what, what is the priority of this job? And, uh, you, you mentioned over there, I want this job to run a priority A, you know, and if it is a priority A, basically then, uh, that, that will take, uh, you know, precedence basically in anything else running in system, you know, it will put everything else on hold and say, I, I am, I have a right priority, you know, as a first priority, I will run in the system. And that's what, that's what it is asking. You know, you want to mention the server name on which it, it uh, your job will run 
and you mentioned may want to mention your slt jobs should be on a priority a or priority b or priority c you know depending upon the scenario then you know, then what the job user will be you know so you have a step user in the jobs as well you know that's it's talking about the you know your job will be executing by let's say you know your your name um, you know basically your chandra you know so you have your id as a chandra you know it is running as basically uh, you job name as as a your name basically over there so you can mention those uh users basically over here you know and uh another interesting thing is if if i am going into system in ltrc and i have created the uh mass id so what slt by default does is basically any job running for that mass id you know that will be running under my name because i created that mass id now if the user leaves the company and uh, its id is terminated basically in the system your a mass id will come on halt you know so the best practice is maintain the uh, job user basically on on over here let's say any um, uh, common user you know the basis you you know you can mention that batch user over here you know and uh, those those uh, batch users are running these jobs basically as a best practice so we have two entries i mean two separate jobs for uh, the server like one is source system and the other one is a yeah yeah so yep. what is the difference between that like i mean it is the top one is for acc and the bottom one is for lt i mean the uh, slt so the yeah that's right you know assume uh, you have your ecc system you know as as a production like scenario any anything we are discussing you know let's assume the ecc server is a different server you know let's not take the uh, scenario what what we are using right now you know let's assume there is a different uh, slt server and different ecc server now you know when you send a request to load a table from your source system it sends a request to your ecc system and it will run the calculation job in ecc system your calculation jobs are running basically your uh, and getting all the synopsis you know access plan uh, what type of structure it is you know everything from the source and you are defining executing server for your ecc server over here and the job class and the user from which it should be running in the source system in ecc and in lt replication server you are talking about slt server basically you will mention your slt server then your job username and the priority basically for the slt server so that's the basic difference between these are the two different servers basically but you can control it you know from from the ltrc in the same cockpit right that is that makes sense you know or you still have doubt you know on the between this yeah um, so i mean why do we i mean we have three different jobs right like the initial i mean the replication job so between like here underneath we are specifying the job class but is this applicable for all the all if all these different job type job types or actually like a, yeah, i mean yeah, all yeah, these different yeah. jobs or it is it is applicable and it is not just about these jobs you know as a basic fundamental you know with an sap uh, any job running in a background you know you can have a priority for that and you can have a step user and uh, from which you want to run that uh, you know a particular job you know and let me see if there is an example for an sm37 you know i can i can uh, pull that no in. i mean my question is can we have diff different uh, like a priority for calculation jobs versus the initial load jobs or like are we setting this a uh, common for all these three job types it is it's common basically you are defining the common server common priority you know it's it's a common for all uh, two of them basically when you are defining so remember you know all three jobs are not running on the same server your data transfer job and the initial uh, initial load job you know they are running on slt and your calculation job is running in the source system in ecc right so yeah. you are define what was that no so so your 
uh, calculation job is running in ECC, you are defining and you know parameter for your ECC server and jo job class for your ECC server and the user for your ECC, not for SLT over here, but for initial and for the data transfer, you are defining that for SLT server, which is your uh, SLT server name, uh, SLT job class, you know, SLT uh, job username. So that's a basic difference, basically how you are maintaining it. Now in, in the case of initial and the data uh, transfer, basically you are maintaining a priority at once. You know, you cannot do that separately. If you're maintaining a priority A for, um, you know, let's say a, a replication server, that means your initial and your data transfer will be taking as a priority A. And if you want to maintain a priority C for the calculation job, that you can do that in separ separately in the source system. Okay. Moving on to the next step, you know, which is a pre-processing stage, you know, pre-processing is something very, very useful and uh, how it is useful, you know, then I have to skip this part and go to the table overview first. And, uh, you know, and I will give you some examples and then I will come back to the processing steps basically. So let's let's assume you know we we wanna uh, I'm just stopping this replication for the BSEC for a for uh, just for a moment. It will take some time, but you know I think well, I should do that. Let's let's wait for this table to get dropped. Okay, it's gone. So let's say, you know, we want to replicate a table now, you know, so are you aware of uh, DD, DD02, uh, T yeah. and 8? You know, so yeah, these are the dictionary dictionary tables, you know, and uh, first of all, this is mandatory basically to see all the tables, you know, these tables should be replicated basically, you know, any empty ID you want to create, mass ID basically, you know, these are the three, three tables which will automatically get loaded, um, you know, to the target. To share the what what's sitting in the uh, ABAP dictionary, basically from a, from a source perspective. Now, if we let's say we want to replicate and start a replicate, basically for the BSEC table. Now we will start with the start load. I will come to the create table DB view, which is way I have not seen that you know not even a rarely used, but you know uh, the security team never will never agree to the creating a table and your dbs will not not agree to that as well i will come to the situation why in what cases we should use that but let's say you know you want to load the table and the, that's a beast b sec uh, and i want to start with the start load which start load means the initial load so if i click on this you know b sec now it, it will start with the load basically over here i see you know, it's a, it is BSEC is there scheduled. You know, if I go back to SM37, I will see the jobs running over there, you know, and the first job that will run is the calculation job. As soon as the calculation job is finished, it will send the information back to SLT. You will see the synopsis receiver, uh, table table in receiver basically created over here. See, the table created. Now that we are waiting for the synopsis as well, you know, it should, it should come anytime. Let's wait for this one first. So synopsis created, that means your calculation job in your ECC system that is finished successfully now, right? Now you will see this is uh, says in, in process, it's gone now, you know, in, it was in process, right? Then load, no replication. That means, you know, it is doing only an initial load, you know, without doing an um, replication at this point in time. So as soon as your initial load is finished, you know, and it will show basically it is initial load is completed. The status will change over here, you know, which will say initial load. And then you will go to basically um, over here and you will say start replication for the BSEC table, right? And as soon as I say start replication for the BSEC table, you will see the status will change over here, you know, and uh, it, it will get into, you know, Replication, same as DD tables and initial load. See the status change from, uh, you know, uh, no, no uh, replication to replication and initial load now. 
Now, in the same way, uh, so how to get to this screen, you know, um, are you aware, you know, how to see the cockpit within the HANA? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. You know, so over here, you know, once you come come over here, basically you will see, you know, this this table is uh, in this cockpit. You know, this table is is uh, kind of in a replicate, which is showing in an error mode right now. You know, so there's there must be some some error message or something like that. But you now we can we can check that basically from the SLT server. But we will come to that error message. Uh, you know, but. Now this is a BSEC table, which is, you know, loaded into memory. And if you see the open content, you know, you should be able to see there is a, um, you know, table getting loaded right now. There is nothing loaded basically. Uh, so it should be loading, you know, as soon as the initial load is completed, you know, we will see the records getting starting this result job is still running basically. So let's wait for but the result. Actually, now. I think we already clicked on uh, the replicate, right? So initial load. Uh, was complete, right? Yeah, it, it was not completed, you know, so, but in this case, it was not completed. But, uh, you know, as soon as the initial load is completed, it will start with the replicate, replicating thereon. You know, so I think we need to wait for some time, you know, to see the uh, initial load getting completed and we will see the data, uh, data populated over here, you know, afterwards. But, you know, before it says failed, you know, so now why it is failed, let's see. You know, so if you click on this view error, right here and it says logging table this already exists in ddic possibly has a different structure okay you know so what we're gonna do is over here and i purposely i skip the processing steps and this is the reason now now we will go back to the this is very basic scenario how to do a replication for any table what what you have seen now we will go back to the processing step and we will we will find out you know how to resolve this error message what you have seen so i will start with the first one then we will resolve that error and then i will i will tell you you know how to do the resolution for these error messages as well now let's say you know in this case it, it is complaining about your basic replication is failed because there is a logging uh, logging table already existing because BSEC, BSEC was already in there. That means when we dropped the replication, the it, it, it was not clean enough that it never uh, dropped the logging table or the triggers in the source system, basically. That's what it means technically. Now, if you see, you know, create a logging table, you can force the logging table creation. You can force the, and in this case, we can force it basically. We can, we can do a, a database trigger force as well. If I click on this guy, for example, uh, create logging table. If I give a BSEC over here, start function, creating a uh, table, you know, creating table basically, and it's end of function. So it, the table must have been created over there, you know, but before we go there, let me explain the further options as well, what we have and what is recommended, you know, in this case. So you can, in the same way you are seeing the logging table error message, you can you can see the trigger as well, you know, in the same error message. So what we can do is we can force the trigger, trigger creation as well on any table, you know, in the same way. If you click on this one, you know, it will show you that you will give the table name, you know, just execute. It will force the trigger on the table, you know, uh, if it is, it is not created. Or if it is, you know, an error message and you want to forcefully create it. Now, create table and synopsis. Basically, if the, your calculation job failed due to X, Y, Z reason, and you don't have access to your source system, or you don't know what happened, and your synopsis is not getting populated, basically, you know, which we have seen in the previous screen, you know, I'm talking about this, this particular one synopsis right here, synopsis created, right? So we can push the synopsis as well and forcefully over here. Now, we can the next next step is define the load and replication object we can define the replication object as well like same as bsec you know what what we are saying is uh, i want you to go and execute the access plan and the calculation step in the source system and create this replication object you know so i'm forcing it basically as a step by step but when we do uh, replication all those steps uh, 
all these steps occur in the background you know but you won't see that but over here the difference is you can create the logging table you can create the trigger you can create the, the synapses you can define the table step by step by step even you know you can generate the runtime module which is an access plan for your object in the source system and uh, you know these these are very useful in production environment when you don't want to drop a table let's say you know table was already in a replication you know from past over a month or so and the data is already replicated and everything is done you know somehow you know something got changed basically now we don't see the synapses uh, for the table uh, any any longer or they, somebody deleted the you know trigger on the source side without even telling the slt admi administrator you know that uh, i deleted the trigger from the source system or the logging table deleted by somebody and uh, slt uh, admin is not even aware of that in that case what you can do rather than dropping the table entirely from the replication you can come over here and you can click on create logging table create a, or create the trigger depending upon what the scenario is or the synopsis and that way it will recreate that forcefully without dropping the table you know from the replication so that's that's where it it is very handy and in some cases let's assume you know you you did the upgrade to your ecc system and after upgrade all your triggers and everything that that's a part of the procedure of the upgrade you know you have to delete all the triggers you have to delete all the logging tables you know before you even start with the uh, replication at that time also these these steps you know comes handy and i have done that in past basically it at some some environment when i mean i'm talking about you know almost 8 years back you know when slt was very young and we were going through the you know um, replication so my team was there basically they they have done this basically and we have seen this you know coming from a you know sap and there is a, a well documented procedure you know in what scenario like in system refresh scenario or what is the procedure looks like what uh, in the upgrade scenario what the procedure looks like you know if the table uh, is deleted accidentally or the triggers uh, is delete deleted accidentally you know what is the procedure what is the sequence looks like basically you know so all that but depending upon each scenario these these uh, will differ but the end goal is you should understand you know when to use what option right uh, till till here you you are you are okay or you have any any questions no uh i think what you are saying is like a, the replicate option the initial load is going to create all of i mean the replicate option is going to create all of this automatically but uh, we have the option to execute each of these steps if needed correct correct okay correct now let's say you know your b uh, your b seg and coming back to this and uh, before only i think to... here i didn't understand was actually like before you clicked on the replicate option the initial load was in complete status right completed status and then it was you... not it was not in completed status you know i clicked on the replication just to show you as an example basically okay. you know for the screens what we were going through so you know okay. don't go by that basically then any time the best as a best practice you want to make sure your initial load is fully completed before you click on the replication you know and don't go by my my click over here i was just trying to show you ahead of time you know before even the initial load completed i clicked on the replication just to show you some examples okay now let's let's assume you know the uh, it is basic the table is consume, um, complaining about you know the um logging table already exist with the same name right so what we're going to do is over here you know so we will reset the object and the settings of a table and we will delete the load we will delete the replication object we will delete the generated runtime object in the source system you know we will reset this object completely so in this case basically our bsec is the perfect example so i will go over here you know and i will execute basically this will delete the bsec table from my replication and clean and clean it basically from the from the background this is the cleanest approach you can drop the table if it is complaining about you know there is some traces left for the logging tracing synapses uh, anything you know access plan 
anything related to that. See, it is taking time. That means, you know, it is it is doing something. It is deleting all that, you know, what BSEC has done in the system, you know, for now. So what at what stage you are at basically, you know, implementing your SLT at your pro, at your project, you mentioned, you know, you're working on SLT in, in some project, right? Yeah, actually, uh, the systems are almost ready and uh, we are trying to identify the source tables uh, mm -hmm. for us to start replicating in the development system. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So how, how many tables you are planning to replicate within the development? You know, thousands Actually, of tables or just uh, uh, less than thousand? I mean, this is the initial phase. Like, uh, so the... I mean, not thousands of tables, but actually uh, the dependencies and mainly the transportation and the TM and the EWM tables, uh, their relationships, and also they have so many custom tables, custom fields. So they are still designing those systems and the tables and interfaces, everything. So we don't know like where they're going to end up, no, all those fields, yeah. Okay. Now I'm deleting the, um, you know, generated runtime objects, you know, for the BSEC. And, you know, the last step is reset the object and the settings of the table as well. So what I'm going to do is select this delete components, you know, so it is asking me delete table and related replication settings. And then it is asking me delete table and synopsis in the target system optional, which we will we will say yes, we want to do that because we want to clean it basically. So what is the difference between the previous delete and this delete? So you know it is doing a reset. So there, there are three steps basically. You know, so the, so the very first one, let me go back to the options the very first one you know it is deleting the load and the replication object which is just like you know you are stopping it and uh, you are just uh, deleting that from the system and it will you will no longer see, see that in the table overview that's a simple option right and the second one is your runtime objects created you know so every table, the physical table or the physical object that you're going to replicate that will have a shadow table or the table linkage, you know, in SLT. And that starts with your IUUC, you know, and the hexa hexadecimal value, you know, somewhere. Basically, it's a magic that is a DMIS component does in the background and it does the mapping. Basically, it will never show you, you know, uh, BSEC to BSEC. Basically, it will show you uh, BSEC to XYZ table. In, in that case. So those are called uh, generated runtime objects and those are stored in SLT only, you know, so it will not be in your source. It will not be in your target that mapping basically be set to XYZ table, you know, it's stored within the SLT table, SLT. That's the run, runtime uh, objects, you know, and uh, that's what we are deleting in the second option. And the third option basically is to reset the object and any settings involved with the BSEC table. So what I did is basically, if I go and click on this one, you know, it, I deleted the all the table settings related to it. And then I deleted the synopsis in the target system as well. So if I go to my target system, which is my sidecar, you know, so you will, if I go and refresh it over there, I will not see uh, my BSEC listed in the um, this view. See, it's gone. It's gone because I have done the reset now. Now, if I go that, back to will that be gone from the content too. Yeah, it from... will be gone from the table table overview as well. You know, so if you okay. see, you know, it, it is gone from here as well. So it is it is all clean. You know, so you don't have to do anything. It's uh, the deletion will take care of. You know, all uh, the reset as well. Now, what I will do is I will start with the BSEC initial load start load, and I will start this one. Now it this will go into the schedule mode. Then it will go to the load table, no replication mode. You know, and uh, you know the, your synapses will be created in between. So all that will will start. 
now once once it gets into the uh, you know synapses and everything will be created it gets into an in process mode then i will go go to the hana hana piece of it just to show the entire life cycle how the replication works and that will complete the scenario for you how it works in the source system how it works in the basically in the target system but there is one thing i would like to show to you which is one of the report how to see the triggers or the logging table basically for any particular table in the source system and i will i will show you that in a in a minute over here you know let's let's complete this piece first Yeah, do we see anywhere like how many records that it is trying to load? What's the size of the table we, or anything like that? Yes, we we see that. But uh, before we go there, you know, that's a load statistics uh, tab. You know, we are not quite there yet. But uh, I will I will take you there. You know, hopefully today itself. You know, and uh, so we can focus on a couple of other topics as well. You know, next next two three days. so uh, let, let me let me okay now it's in in process it's in load uh, load table no replication table created you know a local table created table created in the receiver synopsis created now if i go to my hana you know and if i check over here my bsec is still in schedule state so let's give give it couple of minutes you know and it gets into in process okay you know it's an in process now now if i go to this guy you know right here and click on refresh first okay my bsec is here now if i go and open the content you know you will see the entries which are getting populated right here so all these entries are populated via replication via the initial load right initial initial load correct yeah yeah now as soon as the initial load is completed we will go back to this and we will change the status from initial load to replication oh and this is i'm not able to click on anything it's it's kind of freeze right now you can still see my screen right yeah it seems like the server is freezed or something okay we came back okay now you know since um, you know load table basically that is that is completed that says no replication in process is not there you know that means the initial load is executed now so what we're going to do is we will go to data provisioning back again we will say start replication you know for the bsec so any entry you know that will be added to the source now that will be replicated over you know to your uh, hana sidecar basically that way now we will wait for this okay you know it's changed to replication initial load completed so now uh, any entry we will make in the bsec table that will get replicated to your uh, basically uh, to your site card so this this complete the life cycle but you know there are three or four more options in the data provisioning which which is like you know to stop basically and you can suspend the replication you can resume the replication you know once you suspend you can resume after that you know and basically to stop the load you can simply go and stop the load now coming back to the first one which is a very rare scenario you know and no security team will not not give you authorization for this one and your dbs will not even um, allow you to do this thing as well and uh, that's the case where you need to create a, a table or the db view database view uh, on the database or on the source application 
and what what you are asking is basically xyz table doesn't exist today in the ecc and you want to create that table and then do the replication of that table basically from from uh, the source to your target but this is very rare scenario you know very very rare scenario i have not seen this you know and i have, i will not recommend that to use this as well you know uh, unless and until there is a very specific need so this is this is basically you know very 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 rare basically from that perspective this completes your um, you know table overview but um, another thing to to see basically how many tables are in replication number of table uh, total tables number of failed tables number of in process table number of initial load completed tables replication basically log tab you know so all that is visible over here you know so this completes basically till over here then you go to your data transfer monitor when the initial load or the replication is basically in in the uh, let's say it's in the play and in this case you know we see let's say for t triple zero which is a transparent table you know it is showing the table category which is a transparent table failed status none in process none you know it is defined it is generated it is calculated it is loaded you know what that means is basically it is fully loaded and it is the primary key holder basically and the write mode is insert and write mode is insert for this one and you can change the write mode as well for this guy if you click on this change the table entry and you can do that uh, basically how many access plan parallel mode and then you can change the write mode to uh, anything whatever you want but keep in mind you know it is not recommended to change it unless and until basically it is specifically needed now this thing nobody will tell you but um, you know since i work for sap so i know you know the dms component to the to the core um, so there there is one flaw with slt and the dms component what it is is uh, there are types of tables you know there are cluster tables there are pool tables you know sometimes you know the cluster tables are which are which are part of your oracle databases you know they will not get replicated what and you can come back to this screen and you can change the cluster table to the pool table and that way you can replicate that over but there is no guarantee that it will be 100% accurate but i will i will tell you i have done that and my accuracy was 100% and i have tried that multiple times not one or two or three times you know but i have done that multiple times the accuracy is also good you know so you can change the new reading type if you are not able to uh, read the table from the source you can change the change it to pool table vice versa like a, a cluster table you can change the access plan basically for the calculation if you want to you know so all that and save it and get out of it and and save it over here as well now the you can change the error array for for the uh, transfer behavior as well you know the array for the transfer behavior any of these you can you can choose basically for the array and you can even do the deletion as well sum up as well you know for the uh, particular table and uh, are you are you aware of the table arrays basically uh, i mean it's very 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 basic thing but uh, just just want to make sure you understand the arrays yeah yeah okay yeah so you can change those arrays you know you can change the uh, how how you want to make the insert you you can change the modify the array you can change the dynamic single arrays and you can put the deletion as well i mean you know it's, you you can do multiple things this is the backdoor entry for changing the access now remember i was telling you last in last um, session you know your dba comes back to you and say boss you need to change your access plan it is taking lot of memory on my oracle database and uh, i will not allow this access plan to run on my uh, database right and uh, what you can do is you can come over here you can change the access plan by the transfer behavior and this transfer behavior will change the access plan for the uh, for the dba 
and how many if you want to run the excess plan pre-calculation basically uh, faster then you can do that as well you know the maximum parallel load pro basically you can maintain that over here and uh, if you need need to see information what what kind of a you know uh, the things you need to mention you know you can mention either the parameter or size or you can mention basically num numbering as well which will populate the you know number of parallel load generation on the source side and the your excess plan and everything will be really really quick this thing you cannot do that from the front uh, that's the reason you will come to the table and you change the front, put the change mode from here and then you will do that from from uh, this side now anytime your security admin is giving you an um, authorization for the slt they will not give you this this uh, change button and the sap standard rules also does not provide the change button you know and uh, they assume you know the what they have provided that's 100% but in some cases, you, you, you can do that, you know, to make it performance impact or, you know, to maybe to change the excess plan as well. So, you know, you can do the block processing steps as well, you know, from here. Uh, let's say, you know, it is, is not safe. Is this generally the database or network admins role or I mean, the database administrator's role or like actually the... I mean, BW. this changing changing this it is it is a BW role, you know, because your DBA admin will uh, and network admin will not, never come into picture in this one, but your DBA admin will never touch SLT and uh, they they rely on SLT administrators basically uh, people like um, BW or you know your basis guys basically, you know to give uh, to give them a you know, resolution for the excess plan problems because DBA doesn't know anything about SLT. You know, DBAs are, in most of the cases, they are not even familiar with the SAP applications, right? So that's all that basically, you know, you can change that the behavior of the transfer of the, of the entries, data initial load replication, you know, from here uh, itself. And, uh, you know, this, this is kind of a backdoor entry, but you know, we are not changing anything for, for it. It's just for the demo purposes, basically for now. Now you can change the layout for this thing. You know how you see there are more entries. Basically you can change the layout and manage the layout basically, but it is just, just to see this, this table entries, uh, you know, from, from that perspective, but nothing, nothing else is um, useful in this particular tab in the data, data transfer monitor. The only thing is, you know, your calculation is done what stage of the transfer it is it if it is in process it will show you everything over here if it is in failed status it will show you over here similar similar thing you can see that from the table overview but you cannot check the generated calculated uh, you know kind of a thing basically from there now i was just showing you the pool table and the cluster tables you can sometimes in oracle you know the cluster tables are not we are not able to replicate the cluster tables you know so if you and that's that's your kind of a homework, you know, from the pre previous time I was I was telling you in the Oracle, the cluster tables are not replicable, you know, so there is a note by SAP, you know, that you need to go through and there is a resolution for each table defined as a cluster table in Oracle, specifically running an e uh, ECC on, on Oracle, basically that that will that will show you, you know, what what you need to do with your cluster tables, basically. And you can change that backdoor entry with the transfer behavior. You know what I was showing you in the data transfer monitor. That is another use case uh, where you will use your uh, oh. changing the access plan and everything. Now, going to the application logs. You know, so in this basically application log is pretty pretty straightforward. You know, you you can filter those logs. Basically, you can refresh it. Basically. But uh, right now there, is, there are no logs, you know, you can put the table name if you want to see the logs for your, let's say BSEC, you know, and uh, uh, transfer ID, um, I think what it is, zero, two, three, right? So, and all logs. So it is showing me what happened with BSEC and who did that basically, you know, 
uh, there is a user called admin who do, did that that's not me i'm the best basically so you will see all that and the last replication failure as well you will be able to see that from here what happened to it logging table this doesn't exist you know it is showing you the same information what is was showing you in the table overview but as as i mentioned on a very initial day basically in the previous session slt logging is very very poor you know so don't rely on slt logging it might not show you the error message it, it might show you something else but the underlying problem is you know completely different and uh, that is that is where the strong troubleshoot, troubleshooting skill set comes into play but uh, you know slt is is has the sap has not done a great job you know in in uh, doing a logging basically you know for that now running a empty load for the bsec table if you see the, you know all these run uh, you were asking me how many records are getting transferred. So it started at basically, you know, this number. If you see this number is constant and it is showing you how many records are being transferred, you know, your initial load is completed. Basically, it is it is showing you it is at one, two, four, five, five, four out of the, these many records. So all that you can see that you even you can see that in the spool file, even in the logs of the of the jobs in SM37 as well. And uh, if you see, you know, it is completely, completely done. You know, it says end of uh, end of batch processing, but it is, uh, these logs are coming from your SM37 jobs. So like, which one is 124, 725? So is it the number of records, the count for records? No, number, number of records, that's, that's correct. Now, these are the number of records. And if you see, there is a, another number running over here, 24, 25, 20, 26, you know. So these are the batch numbers. These are the batch numbers, basically, uh, when the replication happens, you know, it happens basically uh, with, with a batching of, you know, 30 records, 100 records, 60 records. And that is also something you can control. And I will show you where, where to control the number of records, you know, how many uh, batches you, you want to execute and uh, how many records you one batch will contain you know so that is also something we can control but that is also very you know it's a backdoor entry but i will i will show you from where where to do that so you know these are the batches but the, the this is also you can see that in sm37 as well now coming to your question about where to see the load stats you know how many records are loaded the first way is basically your uh, jobs, you know, and uh, that is giving you a 10,000 feet view of how many records were there and how many are loaded in the initial. But uh, when it comes to a replication, you know, you never know. Basically, replication is maybe a single transaction, uh, single uh, entry being recorded in, on, into the ECC and that, that got replicated. You know, it's fairly quick. You will never come to know about it. You know, there is no job logs regarding that, basically. Now, if you see, you know, over here, DD02L, this table, you know, is positioned basically as 61, finished at 61. What did that means is calculated records. You know, there were uh, calculation records. Basically, there were six or five records basically in this one. Records read, you know, it is 100 to 100 match, basically. Record inserted, you know, so that is 100% match, basically you are 100% replicated for DD02L table. If you see T000 as well, seven, seven records, seven read, seven inserted, completely done. Uh, records updated, zero. Records deleted, zero. So remember, there is uh, there are three triggers, basically. In last class, I explained that. So there is an insert trigger, there is an update, then there is a delete trigger, basically. Anytime your delete trigger is getting getting initiated, you know, it will put the entry over here. If let's say in the in the BSEC table, you know, you deleted 100 entries out of 300, your delete trigger will be uh, activated and it will delete those records from SANA sidecar as well. And those entries will be recorded in the deleted one. And your updated one, you know, if there is a particular entry in your BSEC, which could just got updated, you know, so that that will record as an update. If you inserted an entry, you know, that will be recorded as an inserted record, basically. 
So, so why are you is, not saying uh, B sec table here? Because like we have the filter on the selection criteria, like load in, in process status. No, uh, actually, you know, we are not seeing that because it, it is in the failed status. If you see, this is in the failed okay. status. So, but we deleted, we deleted the, um, we deleted everything and then restarted, right? Correct. You know, so as I mentioned, you know, it, it could be some other issue or, you know, I, I might need to go and, uh, you know, delete this basically a table from, from the backend system, you know, which is in the source system because the login table always in the source system, right? So what, what we need to do is we will go and just delete this uh, login table manually, you know, and recreate the BSEC table. It will work, you know. So that's not end of the world, but you know, you can, we can do any other table meanwhile. So, but I will show you how to delete the logs, uh, login table and uh, how to delete the trigger as well manually. Uh, EDI 40 maybe. Okay. I will let, let this get, uh, you know, finish. We will come back to EDI 40. And uh, okay, what was the start time? Uh, basically, you can see that. What was the end time for the initial load? You can see that, you know, from here on. So, if somebody is asking you how much time BSEC table took to load uh, into the sidecar, you will come over here, calculate the time, you know, in four hours, basically, you know, for example. And you, you can do that from here. Total total processing time, how much time it took the processing basically, it will show you here. Net run time and the processing time, they are usually they are same, you know. And uh, the, there is there is no difference in between these two unless and until your systems are running very, very slow. And in, in our case, uh, we know the net run time is less than the total processing because it must, must be waiting on something, you know. So that that's uh, what, what that means if you see the lot of gap over here. That's an indicator that you have a performance issue. That's an indicator, but not the not the short sure shot, um, you know, issue that you can go back to your basis guys and say, you know, there is a system performance issue. There could be one or two table, you know, which are taking lot of um, lot of time. You know, that could be the possibility. But if you see the symptom in all the tables, then feel free to reach out to basis team and say, you know, uh, memory CPU network, you know, whatever they need to do. Then. Uh, from a read perspective, you know how much this time it time is for the for the for both the load as well as the replication or like a... it is only for the uh, you know load. If you see, okay. you know from here, our selection is only load. If we okay. say load load in process, load finish. You know, if you see, you know, so load finish now. EDI forty has nothing basically. It's an empty table. You know, we just replicated. We can see that over here. The load is finished for this table, but the records are kind of zero, zero, right? So now if you go back to the load in process, you know, and that, that you will see over here, basically. So that's, that's so a the, difference, you know, but for the, the replication top, itself. The uh, button itself says load statistics. So uh, like a, do we have anything else? I mean, like a separate tab for replication, statistics for replication? No, actually for replication, you know, how you can monitor on the real time basis, you know, that is kind of a manual way to do it, but um, it will get recorded uh, over here, but uh, that should be in the replication as well. And uh, I think I need to create that scenario. I'm thinking how to do that, you know, just to show you an example, because it's very friction of seconds and it's done. Uh, let me think about it and I will get back to you. Let me create that scenario basically, you know, and uh, I need to do some configuration, you know, some something in, in a HANA database. So the replication is not finishing, you know, quite often, uh, very frequently. So, so I can show you the scenario. So let me think about it and get back to you on that one. Yeah. And remind me if I forget about it. Huh? Okay. So uh, let's go back to the in process mode, you know, the, at least there were some numbers. So the, how much time it took for the conversion, right? You know, so all that it is showing you. And then, uh, you know, if you put this bar over here, the percentage, how um, much percentage uh, writing, percentage conversion, percentage reading, you can do that as well. You know, so 
these are the numbers these are the percentages basically you know to report out in most of the time you know if the leadership you know i have seen that in the critical critical projects where uh, you know the data needs to be loaded to, for the compliance or something you know and we need to co complete the project so these numbers comes really handy basically at the time of uh, the reporting to the leadership you know so just to keep in mind this this is from where you can get the uh, you know this this kind of a data and there is a report as well that i will show you uh, there is a i i u u c i think reporting as well i will i will show you that as well now uh, expert functions we still have 20 minutes left you know uh, for today's session so just want to make sure uh, let me see so ltrs and expert functions what you see over here they will be overlapping you know uh, not all of them but uh, most of them uh, except the mapping rules and how to create the transformation you know that is something uh, will be different but most of the things you will see common uh, common over here and most of the things we have discussed like you know job health check basically table health check and n plus one health check all that basically in, in the in the previous one there is nothing basically to um, you know further discuss other than what we have discussed over here but you know from a setting a notification if you click on that it you will give the your email address you know and um, email address like you know to yourself it will send start sending the master transfer id 23 ecc if you put the notification in you want the, all the notification you want warnings you want error messages everything will be sent send out to you but uh, remember you you were asking me question about if my particular table is in uh, error state so i will get to know through the email you know so the answer to that is yes and and you can do that from here you know you can you just need to click uh, error notification put your email address over here and save it and your uh, sc uh, scout basically which is your mail server configuration that basis team do that should be configured as a pre uh, prerequisite basically and uh, laten latency threshold you know so latency threshold is basically really uh, a warning basically for you you know if there is a latency in the table where what you are repl replicating that means your network is is playing a you know a bad role over there so anytime you see a network latency notification coming to your email that means your e uh, your um, network is misbehaving your network is slow that's where the latency is coming from and it, the tables are not getting replicated from your source to uh, sidecar scenario then going back to the journal one you know so if you check mark all these option you want to check the connection status you want to check the master job you want to check the remember the master job is always running you know so if the master jo job is stopped that means your mass um, mass transaction id you know is is kind of stopped basically nothing will work in in that basically no table will be getting replicated under that particular mass id if your master uh, job is stopped and uh, if you want to check the data load if you want to check the latency logs you know all these needs to be checked marked over here you know and uh, th this job needs to be scheduled and you will see the status change over here from not scheduled to scheduled you know and uh, if you want to check about the check the tables in the target that is also something possible you can do that um, what is my status looks like in hana sidecar scenario for xyz table you know so you can you can do that by checking mark this this option and what the table status looks like for the trigger basically and the logging table which is created in on my source you know so you can see those uh, from here as well notification active you know any type of a notification you're going to activate you have to check mark this option you know so that is very much handy and this is very much handy when when you have a critical uh, projects you know on the fly and uh, you want to monitor the each and every step and you want to make sure you are not sitting in front of the system you know so this this cockpit will will really help you for the notification now 
getting getting back back to the first uh, one of it i i will not cover uh, status notification since we have already discussed this one and if you want to discuss further on you know we can still repeat the what what i have uh, done the previous time but there is not much to um, discuss over here now one thing what you were asking me uh, about the replication stats you know and i am a little bit hesitant to show you this but uh, still i will show you uh, because there is no data you know right now and uh, let me see in okay let's say from past 1 hour hour then i will put my couple of tables over here Yeah, there is no data, and that's a scenario I would like to create that for you to show some data. But anyways, I will I will explain this thing. But let me know if you want to really see that. Then I then I um I have to create that scenario. So what's happening is basically as soon as your new record is entered into BSEC or um any any table you know that is in replication, and uh, you know that record is um. committed to the source database and then the slt trigger will trigger that put that into logging table you know logging table will notify slt slt will say okay replicate that over to your hana site part now in this scenario basically um we don't have anything that is that is created as a new entry in the bsec and uh, the scenario i want to work is basically i want to create a real time entry into bsec um you know just to uh, basically trigger this uh, replication for you and then come to this screen display uh, replication starts and uh, you know here you will see basically execution date interval table name inserted record updated record deleted record whatever the record was type of record that was you know latency then latency in minutes you know latency max basically so this is another report other than the load report where you can report the um, you know how the progress looks like for your data replication but answer to your question what you were asking me this is where you will see the display um, replication stats but uh, we will we will come back to this you know once i have this uh, ready for you so where is this option can you go back uh... so this option is you know in the export function you know and in export function you will come to display replication stats okay and you can you can see that basically from minutes hours 6 minutes 12 hours you know we whatever you want to you know these are the uh, criteria and this this is the mass transfer ids as well but anyways you know so the next one you know resolve inconsistencies identified by the cdc application so remember the cdc thing what i was telling you that is sits on top of uh, the solmen right so, so like just now like you were saying like i may think uh, is problem with pool cluster table uh, main load right correct i mean there is a so, problem with the cluster table that is not not even starting with the initial load or the replication because in oracle cluster tables are not supported by slt up to some dmis component but you need to check the latest uh, note sap note on that oracle cluster table or the pool tables you know and there is a specific note there might be something they have resolved but uh, that is not relevant to the cdc you know over here so that is a separate example um uh, but so i mean the, 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 suppose the uh, if we use if sap is using oracle database like a, a bsec is a cluster table like okay, there's no problem so bsec is a cluster table you know then you need to change that into your pool table basically 
you know so the pool tables but uh, there is a specific note as i as i mentioned you know i it has a lot of information what type of table you know and what type of oracle uh, version and then dms component uh, sp level is is not supporting that so i am not up to date on the dms component thing so um, i think you 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 have to do some homework on that part you know and go to sap marketplace and uh, look for uh, the oracle uh, supported version for the uh, pool and the cluster table in in slt you know so that will give you uh, th that will give you the latest information on that one yeah okay so i mean i was just asking like uh, the failure that we've been having like for the bsec is it something to do with the bsec is something to do with bsec being cluster table or no 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 you know so i actually that is uh, i will cover that thing i, I will leave the system as it, as it is you know but um, we we uh, we will cover that tomorrow how to delete logging table and the triggers manually you know so that's a problem with the logging table that's that's a di different problem yeah but but you said like the the errors uh, are not accurate in slt right so but in this case yeah. we still I mean, think that that's right error in i mean there there are uh, not 100% accurate but uh, you know you have to go and troubleshoot and see if this table actually exist in the backend or not right this is okay. the um, this is the mapping table basically your logging map, mapping table in the source system you know uh, against the bsec so if this table exists i will go and manually delete that you know if this table doesn't exist you know so that means there is some other problem uh, we need to see that further okay it's part of it's part of the troubleshooting basically you know so it's a regular uh, troubleshooting process right okay yeah and uh, resolve the in inconsistencies uh, identified by cdc application you know again this is cdc application you know and uh, what i told you last time about the solmen thing the it is sitting on top of the solmen you know in this case basically um we don't have cdc configured and that's a very rare scenario but if you have a cdc configured you will come over here you know you will you will click on this one you will put the rfc to the solmen system uh, rfc to cdc system basically that is the solmen um, obviously you know and uh, then you will put the uh, table name uh, against which you want to check the inconsistency and you will run this and that will give you a inconsistency report basically but um and let's say there's an example uh, in the source side there are 100 entries you know but in the in the target side you are only seeing 98 where are those two entries why they are inconsistent and why they are not getting replicated those two entries you know so that kind of a report basically the, you can get that from chain data capture you know so that's a full form for your cdc now um coming back to your you know the additional functions log replication data you know this is again this is basically your uh, tables in the mass transfer id you know if it is showing you uh, kind of your uh, logging uh, which you can see that from the table overview as well but uh, you know this option is not activated by default and uh, we we never activate this uh, option because you know we get the log data from the table overview anyways or from sm21 or from uh, slg1 you can see the most of the troubleshooting steps basically or the data for the um, you know logging so that's is talking about the same thing define the connection to al alternative system for the initial load uh, that is something uh, you can do that but very rare scenario let's say there there is an bsec table you want and you have two ecc system ecc1 and ecc2 and you want to load initial load from uh, ecc1 and then after that you want to do a replication on from ecc2 that is something you can define uh, basically alternative system for the initial load and uh, that is something where you can maintain the this uh, connection details and uh, rfc details or it will it could be the db db connect as well as a source and uh, oracle anything basically you know uh, from that perspective and uh, schema name username you know so all that but uh, it's very rare scenario it's uh, no no one will ever do that basically you know replicating the initial load from somewhere else and then doing a replication from somewhere else basically 
Now, changing the setting of the connection to the target system, um, if by default, if you see in the admin, you know, administrative data, uh, basically you cannot change this once it is set. But in the expert function, you know, you can you can come over here and you can do that, you know, from the change setting for the connection to the target system. You know, it will sh it will ask you for, um, you know, this the ID, you know, which you want to change. You know, it's, in this case, our connection is 23RR. Basically, you can change the instance number. You can change the password over here. You know, uh, let's say tomorrow your the user what we created to uh, HANA database ECC SLT. You know, the password for that is, is changed or password got expired or you forget about it. You know, so you can come over here and change the password over here. And uh, that will bring the connection up and running back again. And this is your uh, source system, which is your ECC. It is showing you 23RC, which is your connection to the ECC box. And you can change the um, password for your RFC connection from here as well. Source and target both. In most of the cases, you know, for RFC, you, you will never see that scenario. But for HANA, you, you will see that scenario quite often. After three months, there is a policy defined by a security, you know, like a information security policy in the company, you know, and the password got expired after three months, you have to come back over here, you know, make sure you, uh, you are updating the password for the standard user schema user and uh, make the connection up and running back again. Okay, you know, then uh, we already talked about resetting the status, you know, in the pre-processing step as well. So, you know, if I have to do a reset for the trigger and the logging table, you know, since you were asking me what you're going to do about that BSEC table, you know, so this is the step what, what I'm going to do. And that's that's why I was not discussing on the really at the beginning of this expert function. BSEC, you know, I will put that over here. I will say reset the in-process flag, reset the uh fl failed flag basically if any you want to do that reset the logging table created flag right so if i do a reset from here you know my logging table will be uh flag will be reset basically then if i am facing the same issue with my trigger as well you know the trigger will be re uh will be reset from here if i click on this guy execute you know so it will execute and it will show me you know so it is showing failed flag reset one table and rest everything is zero zero zero. That means it was not able to find uh, because the table was set into the failed status B set table and we know that. Now uh, let's go back. Now, if we say reset the load and replication status, you, you can do that from here. You can do the reset of the object flags as well. Similar to the deletion, you know, in the pre-processing and, and curating these, this deletion and curating, you have export function, which is the reset function. You can reset everything that will not delete or it will not recreate the, um, you know, particular table in the replication, but it will reset everything from the very beginning. So this is another useful area where you will come in and you will do that and use these options quite often. And I will encourage you to read about, you know, uh, the reset and, you know, um, deletion and create these options. So next time, you know, when you come in, uh, you should have a lot of questions on these ones, you know, um, basically for the reset and deletion and the create. Because these these three are your friends when you are doing a troubleshooting, you know, uh, this this will really really help you to make make your life easy basically uh, while doing the administration of your SLT. So this complete your uh, LTRC. Right here you know, we just tried to delete uh, the the logging table for BSEC, but it did not, right? Not the logging table. We only did the reset reset for the failed failed flag, and it did that. You know, failed flag. If you have seen the logs, basically, when I was explaining, you know, it was showing as one for the failed flag. You know, if you want to do the reset for status for the table and the synopsis, you know, you can do that as well from here. But it there as per SLT, there is no logging table. You know, for BSEC. 
that's that's a beauty of this tool is basically it is not giving you a right actual error message you know so that means it is something else you know that is going behind so either we have to do that manually you know deletion so you see the fl failed flag set to one you know so in process zero so we know that b sector table is set to failed status so it is resetting the flag basically what it is doing is it's putting the table back to in processing mode and uh, in processing will fail again it will get back to failed status back again so if you see over here this should be set to failed again basically now if i go and reset that back again it will put that into in process you know but by the time i will come back over here you know i will see the status back to failed again because it it's failing again and again because of the logging table thing. So logging table needs to be delete, deleted basically from a DDIC object, which is your uh, ABAP dictionary. Uh, your you, you are um, a developer from uh, the yeah, I'm a developer. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, so, SAP name space like can you can we delete this uh, this table? We we can do that, and there is a report to do that. You know, and I was thinking to cover to cover that uh, uh, tomorrow, but I will show you. If you go to SC38, IUUC underscore list. Yeah, so you can list the triggers. You can trigger basically, I think there should be triggers created. Let's see. Oh man. Standard program dumping. Anyways, you know, so there's another report as well. I think I can use that. Yeah, I need to look for the Logging table thing. Controller, controller for the logging table pre processing. Maybe it might show. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's not the right one. Yeah, anyways, you know, that uh, program is dumping basically. I need to uh, look into that, anyways, basically, from that perspective um but but the thing what i was trying to show you is there is there are standard reports uh, from where you can see uh, what logging tables and triggers are created in system and once you know what is the logging table name against the actual object sitting in the dictionary that you can go and delete basically from a backend table and there is an IUUC underscore, uh, you know, logging recorder or um, that table. Basically, uh, that's something where you, we need to delete that manually. But um, I will show you that uh, tomorrow, basically, you know, on, on uh, how to do that. And then uh, we will start uh, start that basically with um, LTRS, you know, after that. But um, this this today's sessions complete your LTRC and your replication scenario, and uh, that completes basically your initial load replication and the troubleshooting monitoring piece piece of it. But for the transformation, you know, we will cover that tomorrow. But um, I have a question for you um, before we um, you know end up this session. Uh, do you have any feedback basically to adjust any the pace of the training basically or the time or you know you see something missing basically so just trying to understand your perspective yeah i i mean once i get the system and practice uh, 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 then i'll be knowing exactly because we went a little bit faster today and like we did not we assume that the connections i will be able to create the connection i mean the set up the the MTID, everything on my own. Uh, like, uh, so I don't know like, whether uh, I have the right access uh, once I get the yeah, access, I think, I'll be able to, yeah. Yeah, for the access piece, you know, uh, as uh, Chris mentioned, 
you know he will take care of that basically and uh, there there will be a plenty of time for you you know just to uh, practice that basically and uh, i will make sure you know i will uh, have a conversation with chris uh, after this uh, session you know just to make sure he's uh, handing over um, you know the excess part to you and so you can practice now for tomorrow what i am thinking is basically we will start with uh, how to delete the logging table and uh, your uh, triggers you know and we will resolve that bsec thing that is pending from today and then we will move to ltrs options you know ltrs will not take much time you know because most of the things what we what we have seen or we talked about those are kind of a duplicate in ltrs except a couple of things so after that um, maybe the tomorrow session will complete your slt part of it you know and um, after that basically we will move towards your um, hana analytical view and you know moving moving to other other uh, stuff basically on hana side okay so i mean uh, as far as uh, uh, slt is concerned actually okay, the setting up the connection i mean like the creating the config name uh -huh. is it not going to automatically create the schema and the user on the db side or no uh, it will not not create that the the first step uh, is basically you know you you have to have your uh, hana db user created and you you should know your uh, username password you know that's the first thing the second thing is your ecc rfc connection created with a different name you know that's your second step and your third step is you will come to ltrc you know and you will create the connection and uh, it will ask you for the source there you will give your uh, rfc what you created and then the after that it will ask you the target side of it you will give the username password for your database as soon as it is uh, cleared in that step it, you you will go to the next step and uh, click on next you know and uh, it will be created you know it's fairly simple basically if you know the details of your rfc rfc and uh, your user you know it's fairly simple from there on but um, if you let, let's do one thing you know once you get your uh, access you know and uh, i will let you create your, the rfc and uh, you know your hana db user and after that uh, once you have that in within the class basically we will we will create the connection you know you and me will will go through that i will let you share your screen and then uh, we will create that basically but uh, do me a favor you know before class at least have the username uh, basically up and running you know and the dbco connection and the rfc thing basically up and running okay okay yeah thank you thanks sundar Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we will reply to them at the earliest.